Thanks a lot, folks. Apologies for the slight delay. Welcome to this meeting of Cabinet. Um, I'll do the usual preliminaries. Item one is members' code of conduct declarations of interest. Do any have any members wish to declare an interest? I will declare an interest in item number seven uh, by virtue of my um, uh, being a director of the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Any other members wish to declare any interest? And I'll, I'll leave the room for that item and will chair, chair the cabinet. Any other uh, declaration of interest? No? Okay. Um, minutes of the last meeting. Can we agree our sign to accurate record? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, um, let's go into the first uh, substantive item of the legal council, which is the financial monitoring outturn for 2014-15. Uh, I just want to make a, a couple of points on, on this report. I think, I think first of all, it's uh, really pleasing to see the revenue outturn um, produce an underspend of half a million pounds. I think that's a really good result. Um, congratulations to everybody concerned, because um, uh, I know it was a, a very challenging year last year uh, with the, uh, the savings that we had to achieve, so it's a, a really good outcome. Um, and I'm also pleased to see under the, the capital report um, on paragraph 2.5 some of the excellent projects there listed in 2.5 that we have um, funded over the last year um, around some schools, uh, school projects there, um, and uh, some of the street scene uh, additions. Stuart, the new South Park, etc. I know you've been championed that. Um, uh, the new Foxfield School, it's great to see that up and running now, Tony. It's a fantastic facility. Uh, and the extra uh, classrooms at um, Somerville and the Holy Trinity and Woodchurch Road School. So that's that's really, I think, really pleasing to see that outcome. Uh, I'm also really pleased that the council tax and business rate collection rates have, have increased. Uh, I think that's um, that's really welcome. Uh, obviously, further, further work to be done on some of our uh, uh, our debt areas, um, and I know that's ongoing. So really, I just wanted to. Uh, Recommend to Council and uh, to Cabinet under 13 that we uh, we agree those recommendations as, as listed in 13, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, is that agreed? Agreed. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. That takes us on to item 4, the Treasury Management Annual uh, Report. Uh, again, just I need to say a few words. Uh, this is the the regular annual report we get around our treasury management um, activities. Um, people can see the, the work we've done around uh, investments. Um, I'm, I'm pleased under 8.1 to see that the treasury uh, management activities have resulted in a, a £2 million uh, saving in 14-15, and we've, we've added this sum to the general fund balances. Um, so uh, thanks to, to all, all concerned for that good outcome. So again, just moving straight to the recommendations in paragraph 13. Um, so I've just uh, proposed that they agreed. Is, is that agreed? Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, that takes us on to adult social care and public health. Item five is the Public Health Innovation Fund. Chris. Thank you, Phil. Um, this is the <coughs> Possibly even more. 
Um, so despite those cuts, I've recommended that five projects receive further funding for you. And these are the Girls Project, Connect for Wellbeing, the Breeze Long Term Conditions Programme, the Forest Schools Project, and Cycle Willow. The impact um, that these have uh, had on the community has is, is been excellent. And for example, over 200 young women have completed the Girls Programme and have received an open award accreditation. And there were 664 enrolments in Adam Green and Health when the target was only 200 to start with. 204 people have been supported with their long term health conditions under the Greens project. And 14 schools took part in the Forest Schools project, with 91.6% of children taking part, showing an increase in well being and an increase in physical activity by the third, which is massive, and I'm sure the will be very happy. Um, and an amazing 2,849 people took part in cycling events across the world, which is, is wonderful. So um, I'm recommending to Cabinet that we um, approve an investment of £240,000 of the Public Health Innovation Reserve for the, the five projects that I've done. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. Um, can we agree that that recommendation can be so great? Well done to all the projects. Um, that takes us then on to uh, item six, Children and Family Services, and that's the outcome of the representation period on the proposal to amalgamate Pensby High School boys and Pensby High School girls. Tony? Yeah, uh, just uh, so uh, a brief sort of part of the history of how we got to this position, Chair. Um, in, in May 2010, um, two of Pensby Secondary Schools um, entered into a hard federation. That was under a single governing body and head teacher. Then in fall of 2014, this federated governing body approached the council um, asking for a formal consultation on the amalgamation of the two schools. And this uh, consultation was approved by Cabinet on the 6th of November 2014. And following that, we had a six week consultation which ran from the 1st of January to the 20th of February 2015. And also a public meeting which I attended with uh, officers on the 21st of January. This was attended by 26 people. 47 responses to the consultation were received. 40 of them were in favour of the proposed amalgamation. And this outcome was reported to Cabinet on the 25th of March. At this meeting, uh, Cabinet agreed to proceed to the next stage, and this was to publish statutory notices proposing the closure of Pensby High School for lives and from the 13th, 1st of August and prescribed alteration to the gender intake of Pensby High School for girls on the 1st of September. And this notification was published on the uh, 13th of May and was followed by a four-week representation period for council to, 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 to respond. Um, that's, uh, no responses were received during the representation period I think this reflects um, shared a high level of support for the proposals during the formal consultation. What we're asking today is that Cabinet, as a decision makers on these proposals, um, this report sets out the items for consideration by the decision maker, Cabinet, and recommends that the proposal be approved as published in the report. Okay, thanks to Tony. And I know this has been quite a long um, process, but I think it's been very thorough. Um, so, uh, again, my thanks to uh, all, our, all our officers um, who uh, supported this process. So we've seen recommendations in paragraph 15. They agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on to item 7, so I'm going to vacate the chair at this point.
the Chief Executive Officer of the Royal Chamber has been in touch with me to uh, request that this item is, is deferred. Um, that's a proposal I'm going to put to Cabinet. They have a number of concerns and proposals about issues contained within the report. They have requested an opportunity for their chair, the chair of the bid board, to meet with our officers in the forthcoming week um, and for us to bring it back to our cabinet next Monday. Okay? Cabinet agreed to that?